this now? Uh, hi, I'm sure when you've already introduced me, but I'd like to introduce myself again. I'm Joe Glowacki. I'm here to talk about how I strongly think that coding and computing should be involved in the curriculum. There's been recently a push in Parliament towards educating people in primary and secondary schools with coding and computing. Even, uh, even still, computing education in the, in the UK needs a huge overhaul. The old and traditional system of computing could be compared to driving a car, say, to learn, learning to drive a car. You learn how to use spreadsheets, you learn how to use Word, you learn how to use your car. The new way, which I'm both a poster boy, poster boy and an advocate for, is where you not just drive your car, learn to use Word, you build your car, you build Word, you build PowerPoint, you build Excel, and in that, you learn to do it. One of the things that I think coding itself really does grant is something called computational thinking. Computational thinking, CT for short, is thinking as a programmer would whilst developing an algorithm. It would be thinking logically with steps. It has six different characteristics. There is analysing and organising information. This is obviously incredibly applicable in office jobs where you'd have to organise information and present it to your colleagues and they, in turn, would have to analyse your information and do something about it. Um, computational thinking uh, like this can turn gibberish like this <laughs> into something legible like this. So, sounding a bit better now, and that's not all. Um, the, another characteristic, you could say, of computational thinking is decomposition, the ability to decompose a large problem from one huge problem, which is what it would seem like to, to non-computational thinkers, into something that can be understood. So, it's what a computational thinker would see. They would see this instead of making a chocolate orange cake. And they would be able to make this cake. Um, another way uh, that computational thinking is applied is formulating problems for a computer to understand. Now, I might give you a break on this one. You might not understand why, turn, why turning this into this can be of any real importance. But so let's take the example of a compliance officer. The compliance officer has not been in for one day, and they have. A, and uh, the compliance officer has a week's backlog of trades. Instead of bracing, instead of bracing um, him, he or her, him or herself for back pain, eye damage, and a visit to opticians, instead they could only write a simple computer algorithm to solve, to f look at everything inside that list of trades and identify all the problems and simply solve it like that instead of which saving a lot of pain. Another way is to ident another way is identifying, testing and implementing possible solutions. This is known as trying, failing, retrying and succeeding to most people. Say you're on the cutting edge of a field, there's nobody to help you or you have nobody who can give you any help, you've got to figure something out of yourself. You try, you try again, you fail, you try again, you fail, you try again, and eventually you succeed. And this boosts not only creativity, but it makes a generation, teaching people to code makes a generation of innovators who will progress society. Another, another advantage of learning to code and giving yourself computational thinking is something called algorithmic thinking. It's thinking as a computer would in a series of logical steps. This leads to that, leads to the other. And this is just incredibly important because you can follow or you can make a set series of instructions which is easy to follow and can be applied anywhere. Now the last one I think incredibly important in computational thinking is the ability to generalize a process and apply it to any way you can use it. Say, you, throughout the whole of your time as a kid, you've always tidied your own room. You've always been able to tidy your own room. Then you become 21, you leave university, you go to a job, you get a job in an office. 
Say you need to tidy your desk, you use the skill you acquired from simply tidying your room. You generalise that skill to tidy something. Then, at work, you tidy your desk. Now, this is the advantage of coding. You might think, well, how would we teach it to every single child in the UK? Most people think coding belongs to a narrow sub-community of people. And most people think of code as this. But what if children didn't have to be part of this sub-community to code? What if children didn't have to learn this to code? This is where something called Scratch comes in. Scratch was built by the MIT Media Lab, um, headed by Mitch Resnick. It doesn't have scary, huge lines, blocks of immense code. It only has little things you drag around, and from that you can create something wonderful. You don't need syntax. You don't need to learn if, for, else loops, while loops. You don't need to learn any of that. It's just an interactive box of digital Lego, with, which with no knowledge, you can make something truly brilliant. Now, I'm in, here I'm speaking from experience. When, I came, when um, Carl, my saviour and, and uh, computing teacher, came, he taught me how to program through Scratch. And I took to Scratch. Scratch just, gave, Scratch just gave me... I've always been terrible at art. And Scratch gave me a creative outlet to, give, to be creative, to do what I wanted. And that gave me an exhilarating feeling. And I would gladly help anyone get the feeling that I felt. Another good thing about Scratch is it breaks the social barrier of coding. Looking like one of these people and doing this isn't going to be considered very quote-unquote cool. So you might not have the best, I don't know, self-esteem or confidence, but Scratch, Scratch changes that because Scratch is cool. Scratch is fun. Scratch involves everybody, even the most hardy and computer illiterate people around, they will, still, they will still enjoy that. Now, on to what, scra on to what learning to code did for me. I, learned, I went on to more complex language. I learned Java, I learned JavaScript, I learned Python. I can now code quite a lot of things whenever I want. I, went to, I participated in international competitions. I participated in the Grok Learning JavaScript Challenge. I managed to participate in the Young Rewired State um, 2013 challenge in Birmingham. I was featured in a new article for that. I've even come here and I honestly invite you to, f to learn to code, follow my journey all the way to here. Thank you.